This is real numbers. These are real offers from employers. So I actually personally went into our system, pulled out our last five hires that we made. We made all of these hires in the last month. Um, and I even pulled up like what States they were in. Cause I knew people would ask. So I'm going to tell you that. Um, so these placements were made in o Arizona, Ohio. I kind of got a nice wide variety here, Colorado, Florida, and New York. And Michelle, so can, you, you can, can you say as we, let's go through them line by line. Yep. And can you speak to, um, the uh, years of experience that each one of these candidates had, um, because I think that helps us better wrap our heads around the offer. And then um, as you're describing um, the 10% of all collections, um, maybe clearly explain um, yep. the different ways that um, these um, collection incentives or can be laddered as opposed to of all collections. Yeah. Of course, of course. And we're going to go through each and every line, tear it apart. I want to give you, um, this is a slide we're going to stay on quite a while. <laughs> so um, these five um, that I have listed out here, they're all in a one-year to five-year range. I pulled up one year to five-year of experience, believe it or not. But I'm going to tell you, a lot of them got these offers because they work with us and because we push your value, okay? So that that does play a part in it. I always tell people, do not go out on the job job hunt on your own, go out with an expert. It really does make a difference. Um, so these are all wildly different in their makeup of how they're paid out, but they're typically in a similar range of a percentage of collections. So let me tell you what that means. So we have on here, like if average collections in dermatology is 600 to 800,000, what is the total comp? So what are collections, okay? Collections are all the money that you've billed out during the year through insurance, cash payments, whatever it is, all the money that you're responsible for bringing in the door that your practice is actually collected. So, you know, there's a couple of things where they may not have collected. They, they, you build 200 on a patient, it came back 140 or whatever it is, right? So, but Durham is really good. They're billing 90 to 95% very, very well. Collective. So, yeah. So, you know, when we look at our placement data over the last five years for MPs and PAs in Durham, they're generally making 25 to 30% of their overall collections. I used to say 20, 10 to 30% because it was a wider range. So a year ago, I would have said 10 to 30%. This year, I'm saying 25 to 30. In my notes, I even had 20 to 30. And I went back and looked at our data. It's really 25 to 30% of overall collections. Joe, how's that compare with what you know? Yeah, it compares very well. I'd say in general, spot on 25 to 30% is what you can expect. Um, and, you know, with you know, aligning with an expert such as mydermrecruiter.com or having, you know, more experience and having gone through this process through multiple jobs um, after, you know, 8, 10, 12 years of experience, those numbers go up from there. Um, so yeah, absolutely. I, do, I do really think that it can't be understated that, you know, I think most of us just kind of go in and we're hoping just to get a position, but the more that you can arm yourself with allies, um, it really helps you evaluate the contracts. And you know, having your cousin who's an attorney look at the contract and tell you whether they think it's fair or not really is not specific enough because they don't know the Durham space. So knowing what yeah. other groups around your area or other groups around your state or what the national compensation averages are, are really the way that you find out whether the offer that you're going to be presented with is fair or not. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely correct. And the factors I would tell you that affect that percentage, that overall percentage that you're getting. I mean, there are scenarios in which, you know, they're the percentage you're receiving include the type of, you know, healthcare benefits you're getting as well as ancillary benefits that the practice may be providing like a matching 401k 
profit sharing, you know, all those, those things, the better those benefits are, the more expensive they are for the practice. Okay. And so sometimes you, you may be not getting, you know, 35%, you're getting 32 because they're giving you really solid high benefits because that group can afford to do that. You do have to keep that a little bit in mind um, because, you know, the better those benefits are, the more expensive they are for the group. And, you know, therefore some of those dollars, you're getting some of those dollars back um, through those superior benefits that are, you know, kind of above the average practice. So let's, let's do a little math on this slide. And like Joe said, we'll kind of go through these individually. Um, Joe, if, I'm just, just going to ask mm -hmm. you one question that's coming in on the chat. Um, yeah. So I, we're, um, Jamie um, is asking, how can we find out what the trends are in our area? And, um, you know, the trend, the way that you do that is to work with a group like MyDermRecruiter.com that's hiring people all over the country. Yeah, I will tell you. Um, so when we, that is a great question, because I'm going to tell you for a lot of years, when we very first started out, that data is not out there. Okay. Like AAD tries <laughs> they're, they're not getting it done well. So I can tell you that we have now in the last few years become the data source for that because we're, we have this data. This is our last five hires in 30 days. Um, we are really becoming a data source for a lot of agencies, including AAD. They are coming to us now because we do know what the people in your neighborhood are paying. So, you know, if you're like, well, you know, I'm happy at my job, but I wouldn't mind having a conversation about knowing what other groups in my area are paying, things like that call us, let's have that conversation because it, whether you're looking for a job today or a year from now, or hmm, I need to set myself up to maybe look for that new opportunity, we can have that conversation with you up front. So no worries on that. That's all free. You don't have to worry about it. So we will be putting out some stuff and I'm sure DEF will be a part of that um, for us putting out data um, to you guys for probably the last, we'll do it like a couple of years at a time. So yeah, we do have it. So it's very cool to be able to put that together now because we have the right system to do it too now. Um, but if we look at scenario one, thank you for your question. This PA is in Ohio, okay? she I grabbed some details about this particular person. So she is making 140K base, so salary. That's what I mean when I say base. Bear with me, it's my recruiter talk. Um, plus mm -hmm. she's getting 10% of collections. So of every dollar the practice brings in, she's getting 10% of. And you might be like, oh, 10%. That's kind of low, right? I wouldn't take that. I'm making 30% where I'm at. Well, you know, let's look at the math on this, okay? So again, we're going to use that, you know, kind of line, for example, say that she's bringing in 600,000 revenue collections. That's what they're actually collecting from patients into the practice. So 600,000 for the year, okay? So she's getting 100% paid healthcare for herself. She's able to add on family at her cost to discounted costs. Um, however, she's also getting a matching 401k of 3% of her total comp annually. So she doesn't have to put a dollar in. They just give her 3% of her total comp for the year. So if she's making 10% of her collections, which she's bringing in, she's getting about $60,000. Well, she is getting $60,000 in bonus plus her base salary of 140,000. So that's a total of 200,000 annually that she's earning in compensation, right? Well, that's 33.3% of her total collections of 600,000. Okay. Pretty good. It's over our 20 to 30% recommendation. However, she's also getting 3% of her total comp in that 401k, which gives her an extra $6,000 a year that she's getting for just being employed at the practice, which is great. So she doesn't even have to contribute a dollar for that. So now she's at 206, 206,000 annually, which is 34.3% of her total collection. So what if she bumped up to 800? So what if she's there a while, a couple of years, her percentage might go up as well as her collections go up, right? So what if she's really good? She comes in and she's doing cosmetics, she's doing procedures, she's doing everything. She's working five days a week because we do have MPs and PAs that work five days a week. It seems like everybody's only working four right now, but we do have some that work five. Um, so what if she gets to that 800,000 in collections for the year? Now she's getting $80,000 in a bonus plus her $140,000 salary, which puts her at $220,000 annually. 
Plus now she's getting 6,600 from the 401k. So now she's at $226,600 annually. So that's now 35% of her total money that she's bringing in the door. So when you look at 10% or you look at any of these numbers, you really have to do the math. Um, you have to consider and calculate to understand what your total compensation is really going to be, but also to see what expense and value the practice places on your work. Right. So I, my goal, if I'm, you know, have two years of Durham experience, I want to get 30% and above. That's what I want to do. I want to get in there and get that. Well, do the math because when you hear 10%, you're probably like, oh, that's not great. Right. But it is, it's really great because there's no threshold she has to meet. There's no, no other things that are hindering her earning that 10%. Any comments Michelle, on that? Michelle, let me jump in for just a sec. Sorry. Um, someone is uh, um, fixating um, or wanting to know specifically how many patients that these people are seeing or need to see to hit these numbers. And, you know, um, and I'll be interested to hear your thoughts, Michelle, but from the perspective of being productive, it's not really the number of patients you're seeing. Um, it's the amount of um, collection you can get per patient. So some areas, the insurance reimbursement is really low. So you see an acne, acne patient and you can only collect 60 bucks. And then other parts of the country, you can collect $120. So depending on where you are in the, in the country and depending on how many, uh, it'll vary how many patients you need to see. But the, at the end of the day, it's all about generating income in, whether you see 15 patients or 30 patients, it's about maximizing um, the experience with the patient, taking the absolute best care of the patient possible. And oftentimes when you do that and you've got some experience, then you're not just seeing a patient and doing a quick office visit, you'll also be doing a procedure. Um, even in acne, you can inject acneiform abscesses uh, at the same time you're seeing someone for an acne visit and it doesn't cost any more time, but you can almost double the revenue that you collect for that patient visit. So when it comes to patients per day, um, some practices may say, well, we want you to see this many patients a day. And that's fine. That's the way it is. But you want to make sure that going into that situation, you know what the contracts are and how well you're going to be reimbursed for those, for those patients, because that will determine at the end of the month and at the end of the year, what your total collections are so you can know how much money you'll be able to make. Yeah, and I'm sure, Joe, you have separate things on that too, you know, separate webinars on that too, where you can talk about those, you know, per patient things, but you're absolutely right. So this was in Ohio. They actually have a really good reimbursement rate in Ohio. Um, Ohio actually gets great because there's not enough providers there, um, but this is not out of the norm for us. And she's seeing 30 patients a day. 30 is pretty average. Um, you know, the, a lot of our, you know, there are some people who come to us and they're like, I want to see 45 patients a day. That's what I've been doing since training. That's what I want to do. We don't love that for you. We don't push that for you, but if you're want to do that and you're working seven to seven or you're working seven to five, um, you know, you go you right. Um, but none of these are extremes, um, because I will tell you, we, we don't represent extremes. Um, we only represent people who treat our people really well. So any MPAs and, and MPs, if they come back to us and they're like, Hey, they're working me like a dog. I'm seeing 40 patients a day. I got to go to three clinics. I got to do this. We're like, let's get you out of there. That's not good. And we're not working with that group anymore because we don't want to set someone up for that type of experience. That's no good for you. Um, and so if anybody ever finds themselves in that position, we, we get them out of there. So we, we have so many opportunities. We can get them moved out pretty well. Um, you know, you have this secondary um, example of 150K draw. That's going to be foreign to a lot of you because um, a draw is not really a salary. You're paying it back with your collections or 30% of collections. After 18 months, she moves to straight 32% of collections, period. So for her, she gets paid monthly. Her bonuses are paid quarterly. So they take January, February, March, that first quarter. They look at it. If she's over 150,000, she gets 30% of whatever's over that. If she's under, she moves to the next month. 
Now, sometimes in those contracts, you have to watch because at the end of the year, if she's under that, which she won't be in this case, because we know the office, we know all the details, you know, but if God forbid she was under that 150 a year, um, those contracts, you have to make sure that it says that you don't have to pay that back or that deficit doesn't roll into the next year. Because more than nine times out of 10, we tell people don't sign one that if it rolls over, because if there's an issue, it's probably their issue, not yours, right? So usually it's an office problem or a, a practice problem or some issue that if you couldn't get to 150 with that, they thought you would. And if that happens, we're pulling you out of there anyway, probably, but that's very rare. Um, this practice would not have that issue, but there are scenarios where you can get that higher percent of collection by taking, and this is a small group. This was a three doctor, one other PA practice. They were uh, trying to save up to move to that second office. They didn't have a lot of cash on hand, but they have a huge need. So she was fine with going with it with her financial situation. She was fine with going with the draw because she's still getting her paycheck you know, from them. And that's a guaranteed draw she's going to get. So it is really like a salary, but you're paying back with those collections. Does that make sense? Do you, have you guys seen that before? Or you understand how that works? Feel free to ask. And then number three, I actually have a bunch of data on this one. Um, 100, so this third example is $175,000 draw or 30% of collections, whichever is greater. Okay. So this NP was placed in Colorado at 600,000 in collections, which this practice considered a minimum of what she would bring in annually with a 30% rate production bonus rate, she would be at 180,000. So that places her above her draw or her salary. Okay. If she brings in 800,000, this was a really interesting case that happened. And actually something else happened after I made this slide. So it's kind of cool to tell you. So if she brought in 800K, she would be at 240,000. Um, great number, right? Awesome number. However, she, this particular candidate negotiated to herself another tier. She asked for anything over 700,000 to be paid at 35% because the practice, remember we talked about benefits and all that. The practice offered the minimum in benefits and no option of saving for retirement. And she wanted to be able to sock away money for her own with her own Roth IRA. Okay. So because she presented it though, as a win-win option with her production explanation, she got it from them. So what that equated to was the practice paying her out an extra 5k annually for that difference between 700 and 800,000. So that extra 5% was five grand to them. And she knew she could easily meet because she had her numbers and her data from her last practice. So she knew she would be at 800 based on what she was seeing at their practice, what she learned throughout the interview. It was a win for the practice to pay more towards her retirement because then she's not going to leave them because they don't offer a 401k because she's taking care of it in this way. So she showed her value again, right? By leveraging that data that she had. So that was a cool win for her because it was like, oh, they don't do 401k. Well, I can put 6,000 a year in IRA and they give me a little more percentage and then I can stock that back for my IRA. Yeah. And it worked out. They did it. It was awesome. So those negotiation, but she wouldn't have been able to do that if she didn't know in her head, I'm going to make that 800. So I need to leverage that between seven and eight and show them, hey, I did 890 at my last practice. Yeah. And Michelle, I think it's important, you know, when you're looking at these positions and um, you have a contract in front of you that says you're going to get paid a percentage of collections uh, with or without the draw, um, it's okay as a candidate to ask what people in the, that have been with the practice before you, um, what were their, what was their average collections for other PAs, for other NPs in the practice? Oh, yes. And you can ask about the derms as well. It may be that, I mean, that information is invaluable. How many days a week do they work? What are their collections? Can you give me, I don't need to see their numbers, but can you give me um, data from the last few years just in terms of um, their production? So I can know that if I come and I work hard and I take great care of patients, that this is what I may be able to expect seeing whatever it is, say 30 patients a day. Yes, absolutely. And, 
you know, I didn't even mention that because that's a no brainer for me as a recruiter. So when you work with us, we already know that when you come to us, right? So if we're presenting you with an opportunity, we'll show you, Hey, just so you know, they let us know that the last PA who had to relocate to go be by her family or her mom or whatever was bringing in about 850 a year. She had been there for three years. This is how much percentage of cosmetics she did versus Jen Derm. This is how many procedures she did or excisions she did. Um, and, you know, she made about this much per, you know, annually with that. And she saw about this many patients a day too, just to, to hit on that patient part too. So we, we really dig into all of that as recruiters so that you're not blind and you don't even have to ask because we will go after it for you. But if you're on your own, you definitely need to ask that. That's a great point, Joe, because I'm so used to doing it for people, but absolutely, if you're doing it on your own, you need to be saying, you know, Hey, you know, talk to me about the collections, the average collections that the last NP date did over the, over two years, or what's the other one, you know, the other NP or PA doing now, or what's been their average of collections over the past three years, they should be falling over themselves to give you that data because they should be able to say to you, well, listen, she only works three days a week. So her collections are this, but if you add an extra day onto this, this is what the collections would look like. Okay, that's reasonable, right? So when you're taking into consideration all these factors around money, you have to start with, again, what we talked about at the very beginning of this is what you're worth based on your performance, your collections, your value. Um, because if you don't know what you want or what you're worth, you can't negotiate effectively, right? And that's why I do often refer um, to certified PA consulting, Casey D'Amato, who provides one-on-one -on -one career, life, finance coaching for PAs nationwide. She herself was a clinical derm PA. Like I mentioned, she's been in your shoes. So she's the only person, honestly, that I recommend for negotiation services or for any type of coaching services um, because I trust her. Um, and I'm pretty picky about who we work with as partners. Um, but if you go to certifiedpaconsulting.com, you can register, have all kind of free stuff on there um, and learn about her. But if you want to talk about if you're getting paid enough, um, if you want to talk about if you should be looking for another job, if your practice isn't giving you numbers, we should talk. <laughs> so you yeah. pick up the phone and call me because if you're not getting numbers, if you're not able to get them, maybe you're not getting, because you haven't asked yet. That's okay. Totally. We get it. You know, you don't know what you don't know, um, but get those numbers. If they don't give them to you, we, we want to know, right. And you should be getting bonus. I, we keep getting these people, you great, solid, amazing derm MPs and PAs who are just getting a salary. And I'm like, great, but what are you bringing in a year? I don't know. So Michelle, we've got about um, five minutes left. I want to make sure that you're able to go through the last few, and then I'm going to run through some of the, we've got some really good questions in the chat. So oh, good. Um, I can good. run through those pretty quickly, but I want to make sure that you can give us the um, details on these last few um, of yeah. uh, your hires. Yeah. Um, and they're pretty similar, right? You know, rather than going through like all the little mundane details of each thing, I will tell you like, you know, we have the draw of 132 or 25% of collections. Okay. That was actually in New York city. So that is in a more populated area. I will tell you like Miami, New York city, San Francisco, we see that the base or the draws go a little bit down the percentage of collections are more in that 25 to 30 range. They don't go up over 30 that more that often um, because they are some of the reimbursement, some of the competition, you know, some of those factors are there, you know, so, you know, you have to keep that in mind, but that's why, but it was thrilling for her to get the 132 or 25% because let me tell you why <laughs> she was only making $120,000 base salary and she had no idea what her collections were. Well, she came back and her collections were 821, 821,000. She should have been making far more money and now she will, which is awesome. So that she, you know, that helped her. So, and then we have 33% um, of collections up to 500 and then a tier that we call 35% past 500. Great. That's a great package. She actually um, ended up negotiating a draw on that for her just for her first six months. And then she didn't need it after that. She just worked off of straight collections. Um, so yeah, I mean, most of the Durham MPs, PAs that we've been working with, we see anywhere from six to 
boy, I had a Durham NPPA a couple weeks or a couple months ago, I should say that was at 1.2 million in collections. Okay. So that was a lot. <laughs> um, but what are you seeing, Joe, as far as average number of collections per year? Uh, it just depends on how many uh, patient, it depends on how long you've been doing it. Um, how many patients you're seeing a day, how good the contracts are in my area, on uh, the Bay Area, uh, we would, ex I would expect most uh, uh, MPs or PAs that are working four days a week, uh, even three and a half to four days a week to be collecting 1.4 million plus, um, because our contracts are very good um, with insurance. And then also, and you made my you know, point, Joe, not to interrupt you, but if you're getting 25% of 1.4 versus 30% of 700, and you're doing the same number of cases a day and the same number of patients a day, see that difference on just to be aware of that. Go mm -hmm. ahead. Sorry. No, absolutely. And, you know, it depends whether you're doing medical and medical, uh, medical and cosmetic, uh, or a little bit of both, because that top number oftentimes you're going to have to subtract cost of materials. Um, and that's a great point too. Also, Joe, I didn't bring out all these collections. This is minus your consumables that you're doing for cosmetics. Okay. So this is the total you're bringing in cash where they've already deducted your um, consumables out of it. Michelle, exactly. So Michelle, um, I'm just going to ask you a quick question or two from the, um, from the chat. Here, do you represent mostly medical or placements or medical and cosmetic placements? Medical and cosmetic all across the board. We Excellent. do everything. We really yeah. do. We have um, a tremendous amount of Durham NPs and PAs that are doing great things with cosmetics. And, you know, I, I want to also just address another point in the chat. Um, as you can hear, Michelle, every time she refers to an NP or a PA, that's exactly how she refers to them. That's exactly how I refer to us, um, because that's what we are. Um, someone asked a question in the chat about other terminology about um, referring to nurse practitioners or physician assistants. Um, and, you know, that most of those terms are not appropriate because they're not 100% accurate and they no. don't describe exactly what we do and who we are. And so we are nurse practitioners and physician assistants. Um, negotiations with most groups generally doesn't uh, or don't distinguish um, uh, between NPs and PAs unless no. there's some state licensure that the practice or an individual doctor may have some uh, pre, uh, preconceived notions about. Yeah, it's really based, um, the only thing we really see it is, it's really based on the state, right? Like some, there's certain states that are more PA friendly versus NP friendly, and there's more their NP versus PA. It's really about supervision of what level of supervision they have to have, and some can be overly cumbersome. Yeah, you know, and the, the other thing is that the, um, the um, uh, advanced degrees or certifications in dermatology, um, those don't really do much for you at the negotiating table. Um, if you remember the slide, a couple slides back where, um, the, um, uh, you, you have the one pager that shows your numbers and it showed, um, some reviews or links to reviews, the production, there it is. This one page is going to speak more to a per, uh, prospective employer than anything else. It doesn't matter. Uh, whether you're a nurse practitioner or a physician assistant and you have other advanced degrees, uh, employers want to know about the um, that you're a reasonable person and that you're going to be safe in practice and that you're productive and that you have a history of showing um, high levels of collections. That is exactly true. Um, I have a lot of um, new or um, student in PSPAs, and they'll say, should I get the certification? Should I do this? Yes, you should, so that you can know how to do it well, how to do it safely, right? In whatever procedure or um, thing, cosmetic thing that you want to do, but don't do it with, oh, if I have all these, I'm going to get more pay. That is not the way to look at it. Experience talks, you know, and, and walks, like that's really what it is, right? Um, and I know we're going to run out of time here. So I do want to just tell you, 
If you've decided, you know, you need to make a move confidentially, we can help you do that. Or her services are hundred percent free to you all as Derm MPs and PAs. We don't call you mid-levels. We don't call you physician associates, anything else. We call you Derm MPs and PAs because um, that's what you are. But we will talk with you, go over your value points, um, and help you find the best match for you in a new position. And we do work with you every step of the way. So that includes all of this prep, negotiating, the best deal for you. You know, again, like Joe and I were talking about, keep in mind that all, you know, regions, city, states, they have their own set of competitive benchmarks. And we can talk to you about that um, and then help you fight to get the best, um, the best reward, right? The best value back um, from what you're, you have to leverage. That's the whole thing. Um, you know, check out our job site um, on mydermrecruiter.com. We do have a blog on there that's called Five Tips on Nav Navigating Contracts for an MP or PA. Really great blog. So if you're kind of in that process or it's coming up, check that out. Um, and then, you know, if you want some one-on-one, -on -one, I can hook you up with Casey. But thank you, Joe and DDF. Michelle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, thank, thank you. And I'll just tell you from the activity in the Q&A and the activity in the chat, um, we're going to need to do more of these and they're fantastic. Um, I truly appreciate your advocacy for um, not just experienced NPs and PAs, but younger, newer uh, people in the field. And uh, let me just tell our audience, the relationships that uh, Michelle has with the employers around the country and the larger groups around the country are invaluable. And so Michelle, again, Thank you. All of the questions that we have in the chat that were unanswered, we will forward on to Michelle and um, we'll get answers for everyone. And we'll post um, a recap as well um, on our website, the dermnppa.org. So uh, Michelle, thank you. We're going to uh, do a few closing slides and then we'll let everyone get back to their evening. So we hope to see everyone on the call and visit Michelle and her booth at Derm 2023, mydermrecruiter.com will be there. Um, it's gonna be an incredible conference. Our faculty is unparalleled. We have the best dermatologists in the world presenting to us um, in an undiluted fashion at the same level that they present to dermatologists it is absolutely the meeting that you wanna to attend to sharpen your skills and make sure you're up to date with all the latest and newest therapeutic agents coming to market. Uh, we'll extend to everyone on the call a code. Uh, so when you go to dermnppa.org and click on Derm 2023 under the meetings tab, if you use the code JOTOX2023, that will give you um, complimentary registration. So complimentary registration at dermnppa.org for our national um, conference this year, August 3rd to, uh, to August 6th in Las Vegas at the Encore Hotel in the Wind. It is gonna be fantastic. Next slide. And then to get more information like this, um, really the key is um, to visit our website, nppa.org. There's a tremendous amount of information there and check out the podcasts. Um, the podcasts we have loaded up are synced to whichever uh, platform you like to use to uh, listen to podcasts. For me, I say, hey, Siri, play the Dermalorian podcast. So the Dermalorian podcast series is up and running. 